Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be going through everything you need to know to start playing Warcry. This video is all about where to find the rules, which rule books you need, what tools you need to play the game. We'll look at different war bands and where you can get the rules for those too. We'll also look at the box sets and extras, and I'll recommend what you need to get started. Let's get right into it and we'll take a look at the rules first. So there's three categories that I've broken the rules down into. You've got the old rules, you've got the up-to-date new rules, and then you've got the free PDF rules. Let's start with the free PDF rules. And Games Workshop did something they don't normally do. They released a PDF of all the core rules in full on their Warhammer community site. So all the core rules from the core book that you would buy are available to everybody as a free PDF. This is awesome, really good move. Now there are some parts missing. There's not gonna be all the lore and the introductions and the things like that at the beginning. And there's not gonna be all the quests and the narrative campaigns at the end. But you've got the full set of core rules to start playing the game and it's totally free. So if you're unsure if you're gonna like the game or not, you don't wanna invest in the book. You can download those PDF rules and then play the game in full, have a complete understanding of how the game works and you're good to go. And this is available on the Warhammer community site. I'll put a link down below. If I do forget, like I did with Kill Team video that I did yesterday, please let me know, but I'll be sure to add that link down below in the description. Now you just go to the Warhammer community site, go to the download section, and you can see that you've got the core rules there to download, but also the Warcry compendium for chaos, death, destruction, and order as well. So let's have a look at exactly what that entails, because you don't just get the core rules for free, you get the rules for every single faction, every single one that you can play in the game. How cool is that? Especially if you play Age of Sigmar already, you've got all the models, you just need the rules. So I went and did a video for Chaos, I did a video for Destruction, and also for Death and Order, because they released these PDFs over about a week, and so they were doing it like each day, a lot after the core rules were released. So I covered that in great detail in four videos. If you'd like to go and check those videos out, you can dive in deep and see exactly what is included in each. Let's use the Agents of Chaos PDF as an example and we'll break down what's included. All of these PDFs for the different Grand Alliances are taken from the Compendium book that you can buy as an actual book. And altogether, there's gonna be 800 fighter profiles. It includes allies, monsters, thralls, the updated fighter cards, not cars that I've written there, the updated abilities, and also the new reactions that came out with this new edition. You've got everything you need for the different monsters that you can play with each of the four Grand Alliances, and that comes with all their abilities and fighter cards and damage tables too. Then for each warband, here's the Corvus Cabal as an example, you get the fighter abilities and the reaction, which are on the same page, and then you get the fighter cards on another page. The Corvus Cabal are my favourite warband to play in Warcry. This is the first set I bought was... Corvus Cabal before I got anything else and that's what really got me into it and that's why I started the channel actually because Warcry got me hooked so I made loads of videos when I first started just about Warcry so had to include Corvus Cabal here but if you want to go and download these I recommend that as your first step and I'll link directly to the Warhammer community page down below. So you've got the PDFs, perhaps you want to buy the actual book to get all the extra information and have a hard copy, because I do prefer to read from a book than the screen myself, but to start with, the PDF's perfect. But if you get the book, you're gonna get all the rules, the lore, some quests, the campaign play, and a battle generator that'll get you going with each game really quickly, get you started straight away. There's another book available at the moment called The Warband Tome, Rotten Ruin. Now this is taken from a box set and this has got specific terrain rules for Narwood in there. It's also got a Narwood narrative campaign quests to play, other quests and warband lore for two of the new warbands that were introduced in that Rotten Ruin set. So you don't need this book, especially if you don't have the terrain or those warbands, I would say leave that one. And um, if you can still buy the box set though, you might get it for a good price and get the terrain, the models, the book, everything in there. But otherwise, you don't really need the book on its own, unless you want it for those specific warbands and quests. Next up is the compendium, and this is what we saw earlier with the four grand alliances. This is basically all of those taken and put 
into this one book. Now, playing from the book, I find it tricky because I like to put the tokens on the cards and when you've got the book open, that doesn't work at all. So it's actually handy having the PDF because if you can get it printed off, you can then have one or two sheets on the table and use them to put the tokens on. So it works a lot better. So I would say the PDF is probably better than the compendium in print form. So you definitely don't need this book now. That covers the new books with all the updated rules like the reactions and the updated fighter cards. But let's have a look at the old rules because these are what I pretty much play anyway. I, I went for a stage when all the new rules came out. I didn't even introduce it. I just carried on playing with the old rules because they're perfectly fine. You could still buy this old core book and just play these rules. It's a great game. It worked. Didn't even need changing. The reactions do add something to it, which I think are fun. But you don't need it. You could simply play with just the old system, use all of the rules from this core book, which haven't changed that much to be fair when you compare it to the new one, and then use all the old fighter cards too. And I think this there's nothing wrong with this. You don't have to play with the new updated rules. You don't have to play a new edition of any game in fact. Same with Kill Team. You could go back and play the old edition of Kill Team if you've got all the rules. You don't have to and migrate over to the new one, if, especially if you're not playing competitive play, and that certainly applies with Warcry. So if you can get this core book cheap and you're not bothered about playing the up-to-date rules, there certainly isn't any reason why you couldn't give that a go. Once you go down the Warcry rabbit hole, you'll probably find books like the Tome of Champions 2019, 2020 and 2021. The 2019 version has got monster rules, campaign quests, quests, challenge battles, roaming beasts, and so some different ways to play the game and some updates. So it's updating from that core book. It's an extra. Again, you don't need it. The 2020 is an interesting one, one of the better tomes. That came with a really good campaign called Soroth Core, very in-depth, really deep, really good. A lot of people like that. It's got quests, it's got pit fights, which is a fun way to play. Nice way if you've got multiple players. And wildfires, which is like an AI kind of system built into it, which I really liked. And you've also got some lesser artifact tables to add to what you get in the core book. Then there's the 2021 tome. This has fighter profiles updated. This one's quite thicker than the others. It's got branching quests, narrative quests, bladeborne fighters, so you could use all your underworld models. And they did a weird thing here. They brought that in so you could officially use the underworld models. I did anyway, just proxied them with rules that already existed. But they actually gave rules to the specific underworld war bands. But then very quickly after, they removed that from the game. So it's a bit weird. But anyway, you also get fighter updates, some more lesser artifacts, and now this was published late. It's the Tome of Champions 2021, published into 2022, so it was a little bit behind, and a bit weird. And there was a patch of time where Warcry wasn't getting much attention, and things weren't looking that great. But it did come back again, as you'll see when we look at the box sets later on. The question now is, do you need any of these Tome of Champions? And the answer is simply no, especially if you play with the new rules. You really don't need these at all. It's going to confuse things. There's a lot of information you don't need in there. The fighter profiles are going to be wrong. But if you want to keep playing with the old core book rules, then there's no reason why you couldn't get these and just stay within that edition. And then I think you get a lot of fun from this. There's so much in them, especially with the narrative campaigns that they are really good books, really fun. And I, th I just think that first edition, that first like season, if you like, of Warcry was spot on. It's such a good game. There's an awful lot of books and you'll also see this one called Agents of Chaos. There's one book for each of the Grand Alliances. So instead of putting them all in a compendium like they've done with the new edition, in the previous edition, you bought one separately, which was great if you only wanted to play Chaos, for example. But not so good if you wanted to play them all, because then you've got four books you had to uh, shell out for. But um, still, really nice books. They've got the fighter cards in there, abilities, narrative quests, monsters, thralls, heroes and allies but pretty much what you're going to see in the compendium. So again, if you want to play the old version and you don't want to play the up-to-date one, you might want to get these, but I think it's quite expensive. And when you consider the new rules are free as a PDF and you get the whole compendium, which opens up all the different fighters and monsters for the game, then yeah, these really have gone past their sell-by date, I think. So if, if I was to start from now, I would just go with the free PDF, the free compendium, and then start playing with the new rules right away. But 
playing with the old rules is an option, especially if you can get them super cheap or someone might be even giving them away because they only play the new edition now. So yeah, there's something to think about anyway. Right, this is quite a long section because there was a lot of books for Warcry. Here's another one, Monsters and Mercenaries. Really fun when it came out. This has got Fated Quest, Monster Hunts, Monsters Thralls, and bringing the idea of heroes and allies to the game. But this was really superseded by many of the other books. So this got out of date quite quickly. So I would say definitely don't get this one, even if you want to just stick with the old system. Okay, that's the bigger section covered now. So let's have a look at the tools. And the tools for Warcry, very simple. You need a measuring gauge or a measuring tape, and you need some dice. You can use any dice and you can use any tape measuring device whatsoever. You don't have to buy this specific Warcry one. This was certainly more of a gimmick than anything. The measurement is simply in inches, so any measuring device will do. I do recommend these flexible ones, though, that you get in loads of different box sets and starter sets because the movement is quite dynamic in, um, in Warcry, so you're going to be jumping around a lot, and it's nice if you want to go around. You can always bend it and go around in a circle, so that kind of thing. So I do recommend these flexible ones, especially when you start putting lots of terrain on the board. I should mention how many dice you're going to need. Now, I recommend having 16 dice per player. And if you can, I would make six of them one colour, six of them another colour, and four another colour. And when you go through the rules, you'll understand why that makes sense, because you have a mechanism called wild dice. So it's good to have the different colours. It doesn't matter, but it does make the game easier to track. Now let's have a look at factions and choosing a warband. And you've got two options. The first option is to buy a warband on their own. That comes with the Warcry cards, the fighter cards, and the warband abilities and reactions card. Now you can see here with the Horns of Hushoot, they're £37.50. You get the models and you get the cards in the same box. So this is really good and definitely better than what we see with Kill Team, where you just buy the models. And then you have to buy a book to play them. So this is brilliant, especially if you play with someone who's already got their own warband, you've got plenty of terrain, you could literally go out, get yourself a nice discount online, there's lots of discount codes down below in my description, and then you only need to spend potentially £35 with a 20% discount, and then you've got everything you need to play the game. You'll also find that there are lots of other Warcry warbands available that don't come with the cards. And now these are the ones which I call the OG, the original Warcry Warbands, which are still my favorite. I think they're fantastic. They really just are so well designed, so well put together, interesting rules, and each Warband's got their own style of play. So I can definitely recommend picking up any of these, but they don't come with the cards at all. No fighter cards, no ability cards, only the models. But don't forget, all of their fighter cards and abilities are free to download as PDF. So you can get hold of them all, which I think is a must. If you're selling the models for a game, the rules should either come with them or they should be freely accessible. And that's something Kill Team fails on and is pretty disappointing. So with Warcry, I'm really glad they've sorted that out and done things properly. Because why can they expect people to buy models and then have to buy the rules separately and then potentially even find that the rules books have sold out and they can't even get them. So this is very important. And um, yeah, it's not a generous move. It's just like something normal that they should do. So I'm really happy they've done it for Warcry. There's also some bigger models for Warcry. One is the Centaurian Marshal that comes with the ability card with the reaction on there and also the fighter card too. So this is a really cool way to add to your warbands. And when I first discovered the Ogroid Myrmidon, I was blown away. What an awesome model. So cool. But this one won't come with a card because it's one of the older ones. But again, just grab those PDFs for free. You've got all the rules you need. Same goes for the next model, which is the Fomeroid Crusher. When I remember discovering Warcry for the first time, it was so exciting to get these big models alongside the warbands and introduce them to the game. Great fun. So highly recommend getting these in your collection. You've got the Mind Stealer Spheranx as well. So these are just some of the bigger ones that were specifically for Warcry, but are also introduced into Age of Sigmar rules as well. But this isn't it. You can use pretty much, not all of the models from Age of Sigmar, but most of them. So there's going to be a monster ally or fighter card for them. So yeah, if you've got a collection of Age of Sigmar already, you probably don't even have to buy any models. 
Okay, now let's talk about box sets. And the great thing about Warcry is that you can find these box sets available really cheap now because they made too many and they didn't sell as well as they hoped. And so there's certainly a lot available, especially Red Harvest. You can get that for a great price. Check out those shop links I put in my description. They'll take you to some places where you should find them. But the first box set that came out was the starter set. I missed this. I wasn't playing when this came out. I really wish I could have got hold of it, but managed to get it when I bought a collection off a great guy, Terry, much later on when I was playing into the hobby and I managed to get it. But this is awesome. The starter set has just got so much in it. This is brilliant. You've got two warbands or warbnads. I don't know what that means. You've got the terrain, lots of terrain, the core rules, the fighter cards and ability cards. You've also got an extra set of thralls in there. So really you've got three sets of models. So it's just crazy value this. Then you've got the dice, which are actually pretty good. You've got tokens. The dice have got the logos on as well. They're not like the cheap dice that they put in to a lot of the star sets. They were really nice dice. You've got measuring ruler, you've got battle plan cards, and then you've got the thick cardboard board to play on as well. This is a proper starter set and the statue head in it is just fantastic. As a piece of scenery, brilliant. So is the bell tower. And when I got that, that statue head, I was so happy. What a cool piece. Now the next set, you might still be able to get hold of this one. This is Catacombs. Now this gave you some of the terrain that came in the original starter set, but you could flip the board over and then you get this image here, which is like the underground like dungeon catacombs to fight in. And it gave you a different way to play, which I really liked. You could play above ground and then play below ground. So this, that was really fun. And so you got these doorways and things, which are great. You got the nice dice. You got everything that you got in the original starter set, except for the battle plan cards. They don't come as cards, but they are included in the core book, which is again, the same core book that came with the original set. A year later or so, we got the next one, the Red Harvest box set. This had everything in, and now it also included the battle plan cards, so they came back. This was really good. The terrain is vast, fills up the board really nice, and this was a great starter set. Two interesting warbands going up against each other, lots of character. It really is the essence of Warcry in another really good starter set. So if you can get Red Harvest or Catacombs, I would say there's some really good places to start because they've got great models and great scenery. I think you could get those two sets quite cheap, but if you're after the starter set, the original, then this is going to be quite pricey. This is priced uh, yeah, really high, and I think you could probably do better to get one of those other two, then pick up the thralls that aren't included in the other two, and so add to it like that, and then choose other pieces that you need. So yeah, I would, th this one's probably overpriced now when you compare it to what's available, and especially those other two are the prices you can get them at now. After Red Harvest, a new season of Warcry started, and we saw a new addition. A lot of us were afraid they were going to bring out some stupid way of doing the measurements, but they didn't. They kept the core principles of the rules there, but added reactions, changed a few things, made a few tweaks to the game, but again, kept the essence of Warcry. I wasn't a big fan of the warbands included in this one, I must admit. I love the terrain, though, and that's what they sold me on. Not as much terrain. You can certainly see it progressing over time here, a couple of years, and it really is changing. The game's changing quite a lot. But you do find in this starter set that you get everything you would get in the normal one. You can't see the dice and things in this image, but they were included. But I must say the dice aren't as good as in those previous sets. The, the quality started to get a little lacklustre, to say the least. Now we're getting up to date with another box set called Sundered Fate. And Warcry went from doing one box set every year to doing quarterly box set releases, very similar to Kill Team. So you've got a season of Warcry, four box sets released throughout that season, starting with a starter set at the beginning with the rules and everything, the core rules and all the bits and pieces you need. And then every three months after that for three times, you would get another box set without the core rules, but with some new terrain rules, some new terrain and two new warbands. But it's certainly getting less and less terrain now. This is even smaller than Heart of Gur, but the price came down. So this is like 110, I believe, uh, for Sundered Fate. Now we're right up to date with Blood Hunt. This is going to be the third set of this new season that began with Heart of Gur, And this is going to give you two warbands or warbnads. 
You're going to get some more terrain. You're going to get fighter cards and ability cards and a thick gaming board as well. You notice the terrain's very similar. I think if you pull it all together, it'd be awesome. Uh, but on its own, it does look a bit, uh, a bit sparse, doesn't it? You need a bit more, I think, than what you can see here on this one board for sure. That's covered the box sets, and this is a great way to get two warbands and the rules and all the bits and pieces you need to start playing. But I still think if you can get those older sets, there's more value to be had for sure, because it'll be cheaper than the new ones that are out now. And I do think you get a lot more for your money there. Just beware that the fighter cards in those will be out of date, and you'll have to potentially use the free PDF rules to bring them up to date or just change the cards and correct them on there. So that could be a bit annoying. But um, yeah, you can still get Heart of Gur, and I think you'll really enjoy it. That's one of the newer ones, and that comes with everything you need to start playing the game. So definitely a consideration to get a box set for value for money. Now let's look at the final section, which are the extras that you can buy. And we'll begin with the Battle Plan cards. These were a little pack of cards that you bought with the original sets. And so it came with the original set, sorry, already in. But if when they brought out Catacombs, you could buy these separately. I think they're great to have. They're still available online, uh, but they are included in the book. You're going to get most of these cards in the book. But if you can find them, I think it definitely adds to your gameplay. You get the maps to set the terrain up. You get the twist victory cards and the, the quest cards as well. So you know exactly where to deploy everything. So I think if you can get the cards, it's really worth having. But you don't need them because the books give you all that anyway. You can buy specific Warcry dice here, some for the Horns of Hushoot. These are £22 after a discount for 16 dice, which I think quality-wise are just terrible. I wouldn't recommend getting these whatsoever. I think the old ones are the best. You can still get them for £16. There's a link down below that will take you to Firestorm Games where they, they're available. And these dice are really nice. For £16, 16 good quality dice, I can't recommend it enough. But here's some more of the newer ones. Uh, they just don't compare. And so expensive. Quality's poor. Uh, design, not great. I'm not a fan of the dice, as you can tell. And so I would say either get the older dice. You might like these, though, of course. So get them if you like them. Or use any dice. It really doesn't matter. And the final thing to take a look at is the Warcry, the anthology book. Now this is a really good read, I enjoyed this. This was my first ever Warhammer book I read. It's a nice introduction to some of the warbands. You've got some short stories in there, so you can really get into the mind of these like crazy sickos that exist in the eight points and kind of uh, get a vibe for how they might operate on the tabletop as well. So if you're into the lore and that kind of thing, then I think you'll really enjoy this book. And this covers a lot of the original Warcry warbands. Or Warbnads, that I might be calling them from now on. That covers everything for the How to Start Warcry Guide. If you're still here, congratulations for making it this far through the video. I didn't think it would go this long, but those rule books really did take some doing. There's so many books available for Warcry now, and so I think it was important to go through the different ones, the old ones, the new ones, and the free PDFs, just so you've got a good idea. And don't go wasting your money on things you really don't need to get for the game. I think to sum up, if I was to start playing Warcry right now, I would get those free rules, get the free compendium rules, I'd use models I've already got, play a few games, see if I enjoyed it, and then decide from there whether maybe to go for a box set. I think that's probably the angle I would go with. Uh, definitely look to get some of the older ones, because I think the warbands are better, but that's just personal opinion. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope it was helpful and gave you a good insight into how to get started with what is a really fun game. It's one of the better games workshop games, very simple rule set, uh, really quick games and yeah, great fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some value from the video and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think about this? How would you get started if you were to recommend to new players how to get started in the Warcry hobby? Add your feedback and suggestions down below. And if you've got any questions or anything I didn't cover in the video that you're keen to know about, please don't hesitate to ask away and I'll do my best to get a reply to you down in the comment section below. So thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit that notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me keep going with these daily videos. If you'd like to join the Patreon community and check out all the perks available, there's a link in the description down below. It'd be awesome to see you there.